Welcome back to a brand new video, Moon Market Family. We got to get in that Sunday night special for the Moon Market Family. And in this video, I have four total stocks, including a one cent stock and a 15 cent penny stock you may be very familiar with. That means two OTC stocks, two NASDAQ stocks. And I have something to tell you about Mullen at the end of the video. Just have the notification bell turned on right now so you're not last to these high growth stocks we cover on this channel. And drop a quick like on this video. It helps spread the word about these stocks, about the video, just to our wider audience. I do appreciate every single like you drop on this video. I have a link in the description to join the private discord for early alerts. You've got a stock scanner in there that's running live during market hours where you can find the bangers yourself. Let's get right into it. Use the Moomoo link in the top pinned comment and get five free stocks after a deposit. You can use Moomoo, you buy or sell stocks at the brokerage, and you can also trade early on Moomoo at 4 a.m. Eastern time and late at 8 p.m. Eastern time. You can't do that on Robinhood trade any time on Moomoo Moo like you really just cannot on Robinhood. You can trade any time on here whenever the market's open. First stock we're jumping into ticker GFAI, Guard Force AI, up 239% in the past month at $1.73. The market cap is currently sitting at 50 million and GFAI continued to climb higher on great news, constant acquisitions, and they're in exciting sectors of cybersecurity and AI. I have to show you two pieces of news coming up including acquiring up to 36 subsidiaries. And we covered this one below 40 cent in the private discord. You can see it right here, 37. Take a look at the price at the time of that alert and 50 cents on the channel. You can see 59 cent right here and we covered it multiple times. GFAI is number one on Fintel short squeeze leaderboard. The short squeeze screener and leaderboard uses an advanced quantitative model to track companies that have the highest likelihood of experiencing a short squeeze. This does not guarantee a short squeeze, but it's the ones that have the highest likelihood according to Fintel itself. And I really like they closed number one on this leaderboard on Friday because everyone who checks this out consistently looking for the top short squeeze candidates had all weekend to do their due diligence and see that GFAI is number one and this has most likely brought a few new eyes. Here is what the company has accomplished in 2022 alone. They deployed 1400 robots, announced a partnership with SBC and created a US subsidiary, closed the robotics acquisition of SZ and GZ in a $10 million deal, announced year end 2020 run revenue of 35 million and the two upcoming catalyst are number one on march 29th they announced they are in the process of establishing subsidiaries in dubai and australia the official creation of these is an upcoming catalyst and number two would be on march 21st they initiated the acquisition of eight companies and they initially will acquire eight but they have the option to purchase up to 36 kuwait subsidiaries the initial eight is a 30 million deal and they can purchase up to 36 if they choose to do so that's not a guarantee they expect to sign the definitive agreement before the end of may these are the initial eight companies right here they are acquiring and many people may be skeptical about investing in chinese companies which is understandable but it is starting to become more safe to invest in chinese companies that are listed on the U.S. exchange. This is not a guarantee anything could pop up and make Chinese companies just as risky as they used to be. But we do know that U.S. listed Chinese stocks jump after China reportedly considers sharing company audits. Beijing regulators are working to give U.S. authorities complete access to audits of Chinese companies listed publicly in New York. The access could come as soon as the middle of this year. The China Security Commission told CNBC in a statement that it met, met with some accounting firms in the country, telling them to consider preparing for joint inspections. Big news for Chinese companies, including Neo, JD.com, Alibaba, Xping, Li Auto, all those Chinese companies. And that is a big reason why GFAI jumped 12% on Friday. Now, they are getting to the U.S. market. They created a U.S. subsidiary, but GFAI expects to do 55 to 60 million in revenue this year, which is a 66% revenue growth if that is achieved. Taking a look at the chart, GFAI currently has support at $1.44. So if you're looking for a level to get in, $1.44 is the first support level. Next support, we got $1.27. So if it breaks below $1.44, look for $1.27. Breaks below $1.27, look for around $1.00. If we start moving higher again, maybe we get another catalyst. Those subsidiaries get acquired. Look for a break above $1.85 for the next leg higher. Next stock ticker FERN, a $32 million market cap currently sitting at one cent. This is an OTC stock. And if you can't buy or sell OTC stocks, I have a link to interactive brokers in the top pin comment that allows you to buy these very, very small risky OTC stocks. 
This is a tiny crypto stock that has a 32 million market cap. And we just got news from the company. Like with any crypto stock out there, you must believe in the future of cryptocurrency. As I personally do, I believe Bitcoin will reach 100,000 in the future. And the idea behind investing in a small crypto company long term is that you may be able to outperform Bitcoin if you are able to select the companies that are working on rapid growth in this space. And that is what Fernhill is doing. Now, I'm not telling you to invest in Fern over Bitcoin. It's just the idea of you can find more, more growth potentially in these smaller companies, but not guaranteed. This was covered on the channel at 003 to 009 double zeros for multiple months in 2021 before it ran to six cents per share for a well over a thousand percent gain at the time. And it's now all the way back down to one cent from that six cents per share. We just got a long shareholder letter from the company, but we're only going to go over the key points. Fernhill has over 6,500 shareholders. Starting the beginning of 2021 was just one person, CEO Mark Lasky. We have grown our team ninefold, including our main block acquisition. At the beginning of 2021, we started with negative shareholder equity of four of negative 412,000 and finished the year with approximately 11 million in positive shareholder equity for a 27 fold increase or 2700% improvement. Since acquiring main block, we've dramatically improved its infrastructure, signed multiple new client contracts and have several dozen companies in our new business development pipeline. One of those client contracts was Coinbase, by the way. We fully expect great things to come from main block as it becomes globally recognized where its revenues will be measured in the tens of millions of dollars. From that one subsidiary alone, they believe it can bring in ten of tens of millions per year. NFTs are one of the largest growth opportunities in the tokenized economy, and we expect to launch our marketplace platform in quarter two of 2022, which is a catalyst NFT marketplace. We are highly confident that we will be able to quickly ramp up and scale revenue and profitability in 2022 in the NFT space. Stay tuned for more. So more upcoming catalysts include there are two growth initiatives for shareholder value that this letter would not be able to complete without mentioning acquisitions and uplisting to a senior exchange. While our core focus is to grow main block and perfect mind and launch our new NFT marketplace, we strongly believe significant shareholder equity growth and appreciation can be accelerated by making highly selective strategic acquisitions. On the topic of acquisitions, the targets that we have identified, they already have identified some further acquisitions, are closely aligned to our planned digital asset ecosystem and provide a catalyst for exponential growth. Uplisting, last but not least, our stated goal of uplisting to a senior exchange. Given where we are on the calendar as a company, we believe a quarter four 2022 target is still very achievable. Now, taking a look at the chart, we currently broke right above the 0143 support level. So if it does come back down and you may be able to pick some shares up there, but if it breaks below 0143, the next support is 0129. Below that, we have support at 0118. And we also have to break 0166 for that next leg higher. Next stock ticker ILUS currently sitting at 15 cent, $193 million market cap. For anybody new here, ILUS is the big dog of the OTC in my opinion. And their main business focus is emergency response and firefighting, but they are doing much more than that alone. And I believe this will be one of the best long holds in the penny stock market. That's just my opinion. And I've been holding this for almost a year now. ILUS director JP Backwell posted a one hour Q&A today that answers four pages of questions from shareholders. And it's so long that I will be breaking it all down. All the key points in the next video or sometime next week at minimum have the notification bell on for this breakdown because it's an incredible Q&A. JP Backwell is always on point in these Q&As. You're going to want to see the, the full on main points of this Q&A. We did get some news on Thursday last week that was pretty impressive on March 31st. In addition to the completion of seven acquisitions in 14 months, the company is now proceeding with the first investment project in Kakik, Serbia, which includes the acquisition of manufacturing facilities for the ILOS EV technologies. Over the next eight years, this current investment project is expected to provide employment to thousands of Serbians and generate several hundred millions of euros for the city of Kakik and ILUS EV Technologies. In partnership with the city of Kakik and the Serbian government, ILUS EV Technologies will begin manufacturing its E-Raptor range of commercial electric utility vehicles at a large facility, and the facility will be home to the end-to-end -end manufacturing process of the complete E-Raptor EUTV range. By 2029, revenues for ILUS EV Technologies are expected to reach hundreds of millions per year, from this one investment alone, this is the ILUS E-Raptor that they will be manufacturing to bring in millions from Serbia. Taking a look at the ILUS chart, we currently have support at 15.5 
and we have resistance at 16 cents right now that we have had a trouble breaking a few times. We break above that, look for a move to 17 cents. But if we break below 1555, then look for a move to around 14 cents and you may be able to get some shares at 14 cents. It's been great support recently. Below that, we do have a little bit of support at 12.7, but in all reality, the next support below 14 cents is around 11 cents, but it's looking very good right now. We just got to hold 15.5. Jumping into ticker MULN, Mullen Automotive. I'm still excited about this play. They have a lot of upcoming news, and I really like the fact that they got cash on hand now, $2.87. Mullen had a slight red day on Friday, and that was needed after a 38% move on the previous trading day. We recovered very well towards the end of the day and held up in after hours, which is a very good sign going into next week. We know a major upcoming catalyst that everyone is holding their breath for is the van deliveries that the CEO himself stated would be delivered this quarter, which means sometime before June 30th, and they will be delivered to a major, major Fortune 500 company. In this video, I was going to get into some speculation on who exactly it could be and comment down below if you still want me to get into that speculation. I'm open to it. But I believe it is much more exciting and will benefit the share price even more if we just wait it out until the official announcement. And it's really not that far away. Imagine nobody knowing, nobody looking into it that FedEx or Amazon or UPS will be buying these vans, for example, and all shareholders are shocked by the announcement. Let's say FedEx comes out and they're buying the vans. And when shareholders are shocked by an announcement in a very positive way, that could cause a price to surge just like when the CEO was on the Benzinga podcast and he announced that a Fortune 500 company is buying the vans in general, it shocked the shareholders. That's what we want. We want another shock. That's just speculation that FedEx, Amazon, or UPS will even be buying these vans. I have no clue. It could be any Fortune 500 company. But if you want me to get into my speculation just for fun, let me know in the comment section. Mullen is number two most active on stock puts, and it's on a Sunday when most of the time you will see cryptocurrencies like Dogecoin, Bitcoin on high up on the list of the most active over the weekend because you can still trade crypto over the weekend, but it's good to see that Mullen is still number two, right below SPY. Number four, most new watchers and Mullen is still getting tons of new eyes and potential new investors. Number 11 on Reddit trending stocks. And I want to point out that Niall is consistently trending, trending in the Reddit community. So keep an eye on Niall. Niall is a crypto play we covered at 50 cents. Still keep an eye on it. Mullen is number 11. For the first time since this run started, we did see a slight dip in Google interest. So we're not seeing the extreme and constant new eyes coming onto this play like we were in the beginning, which is completely understandable and expected as it's really not sustainable for this to continue to just keep going up and up and up. I believe what will push the Google trends higher again is substantial news like the van deliveries or something about the batteries or something e about the reservations for the Mullen 5. It's number three trending on the lion.com. And this is a popular website for OTC stocks like Ilus and Fern, like we covered in this video. Not all the time do you see a NASDAQ stock on the top of this list. Taking a look at the chart, I previously stated that we were looking like we were forming a wedge and it is looking like we are now. We were able to hold above 278, which I wanted to see. And I want to continue to hold above 278. But if we don't, that's fine because we just want to bounce off this wedge and continue to get to the end of this wedge. And then once we get there, that will set us up nicely with that nice consolidation to either break above or break below. So once we get to the end of this wedge, look for a break above $3. Maybe we get there before we get into the, edge of the, the end of this wedge. But after we break three, look for a next leg higher to 360. But we do have support at 278. We also have to support below that at 247. So if we break out of this wedge below it, which I don't want to see, but if we do, you may be able to pick some shares up at 247. Turn on the notification bell to get all these stock picks early and join the private Discord down below to get stock alerts and all momentum plays for possible scalps and quick trades. Drop a like to spread the word and comment what stocks you are watching this week. Comment the ticker down below. Turn on that bell. That's the most important thing you can do on this channel. That's it for me. Peace.